everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire and I am a full-time nomad. So I spend my time at work camps or car camping or yeah, just anywhere in between basically. And whether you are evicted or purely by choice, moving into your car is definitely quite an endeavor. And the theme of the pudding here, oh, you might be wondering why I'm not in my car. So did, did I move out of my car? Partially, yes. And I'll have to talk about that a little bit later because that's kind of like a whole nother situation. Um, but yeah, but basically the theme of the pudding here is that not all addresses are created equal. I think the first time I moved into my car several years ago, I thought, oh, well, I'll just get a PO box. That will be fine. But the truth is that there's a lot that you cannot do with a PO box. This might be kind of an obvious one, but <laughs> looking back on my personal experience, I definitely would have made sure that my car was in tip top shape before venturing out, make, taking advantage of that time in your house to really prepare your car. Because once you get out, everything, it just seems like the, the less prepared you are for it, the harder it's going to be every time. Uh, something that I did not do this last time and it has really um, haunted me in this last little car stint living situation is not having my windows tinted. I, when I bought the car, it didn't have tinted windows and it's, it really, it haunts me a lot. It's, it's hard. It's not easy. It's, it's not good for your skin. It's not as safe to have untinted windows. And also it's difficult. Like right now, I mean, it would be, if I were to get my windows tinted, it would be difficult because it's already basically summer and you can't roll down your windows. I think, okay, well, it would just be kind of an awkward situation getting it tinted while all my stuff's in there. Like how long would it take? So I think that like tinting your windows, whether you go to like a store and buy the tint and put it on yourself, or if you take it somewhere to have it done, I think that that is something that definitely you will definitely appreciate later if you have that done before you leave your house. If you were wanting to open up another bank account, uh, this is not financial advice, but if I just had regional banks right now, I would be, op I would just be opening another bank account right now. Like I, I don't know, maybe who knows what I know. Maybe I don't know anything, but I have multiple bank accounts and I know that it's a blessing to me because stuff just can go haywire in the car. Like I can, I will lose a debit card for like three weeks and thank God, like I have another bank account or I, I have other ways because when you're in your car, things get lost like crazy. I mean, I'm sure people could be more careful than I am, but it's just a fact that stuff gets, it's really hard. It's harder to keep stuff straight in the car. So I really recommend like having like another bank account where if you're trying to pump gas and you can't find your debit card, I mean, that would just be really bad. And I mean, you know, with all these bank glitches <laughs> these days, I'm not going there, um, but open up a bank account. Um, and I hate to say this because I love the small businesses. I love the, re you know, the regional banks. I mean, that, that's what I like, but um, I would, I'm glad that I opened up, that when I had an opportunity, I opened up with like a large national bank and who knows, I could come back with another video in a month and be like, oh, my bank, you know, like Wells Fargo crashed or something and who knows, I don't know the future, but I do know that, I do know that I haven't tried to do this but I have heard on from many people, like in many accounts, that it's difficult to open a bank account with a personal mailbox. And that, that's what I have. That is my South Dakota address that I used to get my driver's license. So you'll wanna get that bank account. It just, it looks really bad. It looks really bad if you have car insurance. And even if you never even deal with snail mail, like I have my, like I use Geico and I do everything on my app. I pay for it, like everything. It's like on my app. I don't even do anything with it like snail mail. But I know that if they were to send me something and it were to be returned to them, that would look really bad. You definitely want to be proactive and either just have your mail sent to the new address and tell them yourself that you've changed your address. You wanna be really careful about bills, like credit card bills bouncing back. It can kind of set off like a chain of reaction. I mean, I don't know if it really can, but especially with the car insurance, that's something you wanna be very, very careful about. You don't want mail bouncing back, 
even if you, like I said, even if you don't even use the mail because everything's you use everything online, just to avoid sending off alarms to creditors, insurers, whatever, get your passport. This is something that I, I really wish I had done. There's no reason to not take advantage of that time in your house to get your passport taken care of. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. You might wanna take a trip, like who knows? Why not just get it done? And also you'll have like a backup. Like I, for example, I have a medication that I take and I need to show my driver's license. I need to show a photo ID official photo ID when I go and pick it up. Well, if I lose my driver's license, then I'm gonna have a big problem because it's gonna take a while for me to get my driver's license. Like who knows, like if you, you're not sure what your address, if you're having issues, it's gonna be like not good. So I would try to get like the documents that you can get, like your passport, like even your birth certificate, and just make sure that you have that before you leave. Because like I say, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but like once you get into your car, things, it can actually, it can turn out to be more complicated than you thought. If you are in an apartment and you have a security deposit you're getting back, clean your apartment, do a great job. Uh, if you need to get friends in to come help you, get them in there, get the stuff all cleaned up because you might really appreciate getting that deposit back. So in all the excitement to get out, don't forget to just really dot the i's and cross the t's because a couple months later if things are getting rough getting that security deposit back it's it's going to be a blessing i know i know it was for me at one point with an apartment deposit i would also i would also apply for all the jobs like all the gigs that you can before leaving your house because like for example like my doordash and my uber eats and my grubhub like those all have like equipment that i had sent to me so they needed like i needed to be able to get that at my house and like I said, if you apply for a job like that and then they send you a hot bag and it returns to them, that's gonna look kind of bad and it could affect your ability. Like it could, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, if you can't get your stuff and there's questions about if you actually live there, then that could really affect it. So I would just encourage you to, before leaving, to use that address to apply for um, whatever things that you think might help you when you are out there living in your car. Parker is more than an emotional support animal. He is he is an actual like written by a doctor animal um, for service. I would try and have that if if you if that if this applies to you, I would really recommend getting that letter done before you leave. I have been really blessed by that ability to to take to take my animals, to take, you know, Daisy before Parker, now Parker into hotels with me. I can confidently take him in places when I need to get things done. And I know that this is a whole controversial thing and I'm actually not talking about ESA animals. There's, a, there's another segment that often gets ignored, but they are dogs that are prescribed by a, your psychiatrist for medical reasons. And I know we could go down a whole rabbit hole, so to speak, with this. But I think that my philosophy in life is, is to do the best with what you have. I mean, if, you know, if somebody's going to give you something, then take it. Um, I, I mean, I have integrity. I don't believe in stealing. I don't believe in taking from other people. But if something's going to help you, like, why not use that to your advantage? And I know that like a lot of the work that I do right now in between my work camp jobs is online work and it's not highly lucrative, but you know, it pays, I mean, it pays for all my gasoline to go do my door dashing. It pays, it pays for like some expenses. And so my ability to take Parker into a library with me confidently, that has afforded me the ability to be more independent and to be able to live my life better. So this is, I'm kind of going off on like a tangent here, but I just, I just don't see why if something's going to help us and it's not, if something's going to help you and it's not like, and you're allowed to do it 
and it's not hurting somebody else, I don't think that we should like be so ashamed to not try and help ourselves in the way that we can. Um, with gyms like Planet Fitness, I don't think that's as much of an issue, but if you're wanting to join like a community, like rec center, that's something that would definitely be advantageous to you to have that membership and also something that you'll wanna do with, like, with your current street address. Health insurance is another one. Um, I, I'm no longer, I, I am not on any, like I don't have, I don't have Medicaid. I did at one point, I'm no longer, I'm no longer receiving government aid. Um, I'm not, I'm proud, I'm happy with my choice for that. I'm not, it had to come to that point for me though. It had to, like I had to be ready, you know, to make that, that kind of leap and <laughs> I hope everything goes well. Um, but if you are on Medicaid and things like that, you wanna be really careful because I have heard about people losing their Medicaid just because their address wasn't like verified or something. And that just seems like really unnecessary to me. Uh, even if even if you don't have an address, it's better to just tell them that you don't have an address. Or, well, I don't always recommend this because these places can be kind of rough and I don't like the atmosphere always. If you go to a homeless day shelter, you could use that address and the government will send your Medicaid card to that because that's what they did for me. At one point when I didn't know what to do about an address before I went the South Dakota route, but it just seems very, it just seems like if you rely on Medicaid, it just seems like it would be very pointless to me to lose your Medicaid just because like your address wasn't right. So that just, yeah, I, that just seems very um, unnecessary. So so I would say before you leave, um, just be sure and get that, that forwarding changed or let, or let them know. I would also change past addresses to your current address that you are about to leave. If you have any records or cards, anything that is from a previous address, I would get that changed to the address where you are now. Even though you're leaving, that will buy you time. Because I remember after I left the Mennonites, I stayed, um, I was living in Harrisonburg in like a real apartment, like a real address and I got my driver's license and all that stuff and really having all my stuff current when I left that place, it, it bought me some time. So I would, that way you don't have like, you don't leave and then you have not only do you not have your last address, but then you have other addresses that it's just better to leave with like one address and then you can have that forwarded to whatever you choose to be your new method of getting mail. Okay, this one kind of goes against like all of my being just so gung-ho about living in my car, but I sort of told myself that in this video I was going to take a more neutral stance. And something you might want to look into is just not leaving your house. Because there actually is help out there that I don't think a lot of people always realize that there is help. There is like utility assistance, there are uh, food pantries. If you really don't want to leave your house, I really would encourage you to like seek like to not be ashamed and to like seek like rental assistance. Sometimes it takes a lot of work to find these programs and it can be overwhelming. But if the help is out there for you, I just don't see why you shouldn't take advantage of the help. If you don't have full car insurance or AAA, um, please get it. I've I've used mine multiple times. I think that the more that you're out there on the road, just the more that you're doing, the more in and out of the vehicle, the more liable things are to happen. That you're going to lock a key in the car, or you're going to lose a key. It's happened to me a few times. The more things can go wrong, and I really think that it's worth it to have the roadside assistance. There's lots of great resources out there. Some have worked for me, some haven't worked. I have tried like a safe parking program and I'm not like totally saying that they don't have their place. 
I, d I did not really feel comfortable there personally. I actually didn't quite feel as safe at the safe parking program. I kind of felt like, you know, at the end of the night, people know I'm sleeping in my car. And I mean, I know that there's, you know, cameras and stuff, but I just kind of felt like, you know, at the end of the night, like people are driving by and there's a sign that says parking for, you know, the safe program only. And that just didn't make me feel quite as safe. And I didn't sleep well because there was fighting and doors slamming and, and it really was not the best environment for me. I think that it has its place. I mean, if I were like in like San Jose or like San Francisco or some really high crime area, um, that could be your only option. I get that. For myself, I I just feel safer like being more stealth. Uh, but there is just a wealth of information on YouTube to find, and I hope this uh, I hope this helped you. I I know that this isn't like I'm sure. In fact, if you can think of other things, please put them in the comments uh, so that will be helpful to people who might come across this video. But these are just some of the things that have helped me and some of the things where I wish I had been more on top of because I know that it ultimately would have made things easier for me once I got out there in my car. So um, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.